Good afternoon, and we'll uh, call the hearing to order. Um, today we're going to undertake the responsibility, our responsibility, to provide views and estimates on the Small Business Administration's budget for fiscal year 2014. This job is made significantly more difficult because the President has not complied with his statutory responsibility to deliver a budget by the first week of February. And given the absence of budgetary data from the President or the Administrator of the SBA, the views and estimates suggest uh, methods by which the Budget Committee can allocate resources to improve the overall efficiency of the SBA programs. This entails allocating more funds to critical core programs while eliminating funds for unproven and unauthorized SBA initiative efforts. The approach offered in the Committee's views and estimates is confirmed by Administrator Mills' recent letter to the Chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee on the potential effect of sequestration uh, on SBA programs. Rather than use funds for statutorily mandated initiatives that create jobs, things such as the 7A and 504 programs, or to prevent fraud in small business government contracting programs, the Administrator wrote that she would continue to fund an unproven and unauthorized regional innovation uh, regional Innovation Cluster Training Program. The Regional Innovation Cluster concept has never been explained to this committee or demonstrated to create a single job at a small business. But the example of the Regional Innovation Cluster simply is symbolic of an agency that believes that it, rather than Congress, is the best determinant of what will help small businesses. The SBA frequently creates pilot programs without any input from the public, so the agency is unable to determine what the benefits will be or whether they will even work. This lack of transparency is not just bad for its own sake. It empowers the SBA to take risks with taxpayer funds and the, and the public finds out only after the pilot program goes bad. One such program has cost the SBA $8 million uh, that it is still trying to recoup. Similarly, the agency created a special type of small business investment company without public input, yet the SBA still lacks regulations or standard operating procedures that specify the rules governing the issuance of licenses for someone seeking to operate a small business investment company. The Views and Estimates letter calls for a reallocation of the SBA's budget to focus on its core programs, the ones authorized by Congress. By necessity, such a budget requires hard choices, choices that neither the President nor the Administrator have provided to this committee. The Views and Estimates letter recommends that the inefficient and duplicative outreach and training programs either be terminated or transferred to agencies that have greater resources to operate them. Termination would include the Regional Clusters Initiative, a program whose only mention is in a conference report and not in any public law signed by the President. Furthermore, the Views and Estimates letter recommends the allocation of funds only for the agency programs speci specifically enacted by Congress. This will ensure that the SBA focuses its scarce financial resources on programs that Congress is considered to be effective. Allocating funds to the SBA's capital access programs has proven to create jobs according to the agency's own recently released research. Devoting resources to small business contracting will open markets and prevent abuse of the, those programs, and limiting the SBA's entrepreneurial development efforts to the largest and best funded programs will allow entrepreneurs to obtain the necessary education to operate their businesses. Another way for the agency to save Federal dollars is to reduce appropriated funds that cover the costs of the capital access programs. Appropriated dollars are needed because the fees and recoveries on defaulted loans do not cover the costs of the programs. One solution to this problem is increasing recoveries on defaulted loans, yet the SBA has never broached the subject with this committee, even during a time when the agency claims that its ability to deliver services to small businesses will be significantly curtailed. The Views and Estimates letter highlights this issue, and the committee will investigate legislative changes needed to increase recoveries on defaulted loans. Despite the hard choices set forth in the Views and Estimates letter, the SBA still will be able to make capital available, provide advice, increase utilization of small businesses as Federal Government contractors. And ultimately, these selective reductions in the SBA's budget will reduce Federal spending without undermining assistance to America's job creators, the small businesses. Now I recognize Ranking Member Velasquez for her opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we sit here, we are hours away from $85 billion in across-the-board budget cuts. In that light, I will suggest the SBA o budget offers a stark example of how reducing successful programs, some of which actually generate $2 of tax revenue for everyone we invest, is penny-wise and pound-foolish. Consideration of this year's views and estimates certainly comes at an odd time. Before, we have a proposed budget to examine. 
While submission of this document to the budget committee is an important aspect of the committee's work, doing so without an actual budget to critique seems like a questionable exercise. Some parts of the majority's views and estimate do make sense. For example, eliminating many unauthorized initiatives or so-called pilot programs is a wise move, especially given current fiscal constraints. Time and again, these initiatives have been found to be ineffective and costly. They divert valuable resources away from proven programs authorized by Congress. Pilot programs are simply a luxury the SBA can no longer afford. However, there are several areas of concerns with the views and estimate. First and foremost, eliminating funding for most entrepreneurial development programs is absolutely the wrong direction. Doing so would leave, would leave startups without support to succeed when we need those enterprises to grow and create jobs. Make no mistake, the ED programs need reform. However, drastic across-the-board cuts without a legislative fix is as ill-conceived as the sequester. If the views went too far in terms of the ED program, they sh fall short in terms of small business contracting. For yet another year, the government failed to meet its 23% small business goal, depriving small firms of $3.1 billion in contracting uh, in contracting dollars. The solution proposed in the draft views is to reallocate funds and rely on the existing structure of PCRs and Ostobus. This has not worked in a decade, and there is no evidence suggesting it will work now. We should be exploring innovative ways to meet contracting goals, not maintaining the current broken system that fails small businesses. Taken in its entirety, these views are a mixed bag. However, I think we all agree more must be done at SBA in terms of setting priorities. I look forward to working with the chairman and all my colleagues to achieve this goal. The success of the American economy depends on small businesses accessing capital, receiving technical support, and securing federal contracting opportunities. We should continue supporting the SBA in delivering these services. However, accomplishing more with less requires the SBA to make changes, like recommitting itself to existing programs that actually work. Doing so will bring tangible benefits to small businesses and make sure taxpayers see a positive return on their investment. Mr. Chairman, thank you, and I yield back. Are there any other members who wish to be recognized on a statement, uh, for a statement on the views and estimates? <clears throat> Seeing none, the committee now moves to consideration of the views and estimates. The clerk will please read the title of the document. Views and estimates of the Committee on Small Business on matters to be set forth in the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2014. Thank you. I would ask unanimous consent that the views and estimates be considered as read and open for amendment in its entirety. Does any member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? Seeing no amendments, the question is on adopting the views and estimates. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. No. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the views and estimates is adopted. And I now recognize our ranking member Velasquez for a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I want to provide the committee notice that the Democratic members will be filing separate and dissenting views with the Budget Committee. Without objection, it is so ordered, and I ask unanimous consent that the committee be authorized to correct punctuation and make other necessary grammatical and technical corrections on the document considered today. And without objection, that is so ordered, and the committee is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>